good morning uh, i hope uh, i am audible good morning sir good morning sir good morning sir uh, good morning, good morning sir. sir yeah good morning so uh, briefly i would like to uh, discuss the concepts uh, uh, we had already discussed okay uh, previously so corresponding to this particular graph where we discuss about uh, the magnitude of spectral gradient existence with respect to wavelength okay so uh, we have already derived certain conclusion on this graph okay and that will be later on helpful for us to understand the design of a remote sensing system okay so what conclusion we have drawn uh, from this particular graph i would like you to respond anyone can uh, just you can raise your hand and then i will ask you uh, you you can then share your uh, your uh, your views anyone please uh, unmute and uh, only one conclusion you can discuss sir good morning sir oh uh, yeah yeah sudhir yeah please in this uh, graph what we understand that in the range of 0.4 to 0.7 mean means uh, in visible range the sun emits the maximum correct mm -hmm. and the point is the uh, 0.5 mu micron and the second point is that the earth emits maximum at the 9.7 mu micron mm -hmm. micrometer correct mm -hmm. yes. and the, okay. the dividing line was the 3 mu micron for the uh, emitting and the reflectance correct so uh, these are thanks, main points for it. yeah thanks to this uh, for highlighting the main points related to this particular graph okay so again uh, i am uh, briefly discussing those points if you see in this plot and uh, do you know that these conclusions are required while we are designing the uh, imaging sensors okay uh, in uh, satellite based imaging as i discussed before we use multiple number of bands spectral band i talk okay what does this mean let me go forward uh, could you see this uh, right now on your screen the description of wavelength and different bands Yes, sir. No, sir. It's energy source on my screen. Yes, sir. No, right now I'm on the slide where uh, you can see the different uh, spectral bands and their wavelength. This is a spectral line. No, sir. Currently yes, sir. on the screen is uh, a slide name energy source. Is it for all I of you? Yes, yeah, Sumit. No, sir. Slide fourteen, sir. No, sir. 14 the correct so i am num i am at slide number 14 so uh, if you have let's say if you can't see on your screen uh, you already have the slide you can open it no issue so right now i am at slide number 14 so there you can see that uh, uh, the nomenclature for different spectral band across from cosmic rays x rays gamma rays then till television and radio waves and corresponding wavelength uh, is given okay so there you can see that like uh, we have a visible spectrum where three spectral bands are there blue green and red okay their range are given if you consider blue it's 0.4 to 0.5 micrometer in case of green it's 0.5 to 0.6 while in case of red 0.6 to 0.7 okay so when we define a spectral band so we define the range of wavelength in which that uh, in which the we consider the energy for that particular spectral band 
okay like if i consider red red band it means in the red band if you are imaging the object in that particular band sensor sense energy only within 0.6 to 0.7 micrometer correct so main point is when we go for designing if you consider the designing of different sensors okay corresponding to a particular spectral band let's say if i consider the red band and i am going to design the sensor corresponding to red band okay if i talk in the uh, this infrared band there are certain discrete spectral bands where we want to design our sensor okay so how that is decided okay at the designing stage when we are going to select the spectral band okay and where they are on the wavelength axis here you can see the wavelength axis okay and uh, our aim is to decide at the sensor level designing of the sensor which spectral band we need to select correct so what should be criteria when we are going to select a spectral band what should be the criteria criteria should be like in that particular spectral band at least we get significant amount of reflected or radiated energy from earth surface object because see, we do not want to select a spectral band at a particular location on wavelength axis where we do not receive the significant energy okay in our next discussion we will incorporate like where we get the availability of energy okay along the wavelength axis okay what are the discrete locations okay where we get enough energy that passes through the atmosphere again that is significantly reflected by the earth surface object okay so ultimate aim see why we are discussing all these things why we are understanding this concept like uh, how the energy vary how atmosphere behave that part we are going to consider right now okay what is the interaction by earth surface object main motive is like we need to decide the windows along the spectral along the wavelength axis windows means some discrete bands okay where we can say that okay if we select a spectral band let's say if i say yes i am selecting a spectral band between 0.6 to 0.7 micrometer that is red band okay so now we need to ensure that in the red band if we are going to design our satellite system satellite based sensor okay do we are getting the significant energy uh, that that reaches to the sensor in the red band okay for this understanding it is one example i i, I discuss with you similarly if you see that the wavelength this range of wavelength is wide when we consider the thermal uh, this uh, uh, infrared band okay so infrared band is very large uh, spectrum okay in terms of wavelength where we have a near infrared mid infrared thermal infrared far infrared okay and when we go to design the sensor we select many spectral bands in infrared region okay so where we locate like red band i said 0.6 to 0.7 so similarly 0.7 micrometer onward towards microwave okay what are the discrete locations on the wavelength axis where we select the uh, spectral band okay where we design our sensors is it clear to understand this concept we do the analysis for uh, strength this magnitude of radiated energy we do the analysis for how atmosphere behaves okay we do the analysis how the earth surface object behaves when energy interact with the objects correct so there are three phases three steps if uh, i talk the hierarchy okay and again i would like to revisit the slide and then it will be more clear 
to you where the, I talk about the different stages through which we do the satellite based imaging. Yes, this part. Right now I'm at slide number four. I hope is it coming on your screen? Yes, sir. Correct. No, sir. So if uh, if it is not coming, then you can uh, parallelly open the slide on your uh, offline. Offline, you can open the slide on your desktop. Sir, uh, which okay. one? There are too many. I'm at slide number four right now. Sir, I want to know the uh, name of the PPT file. Uh, hyperspectral image classification, which uh, in class material there. You don't know file. I mean, uh, I think I have been already teaching this this slide since last three lectures. <laughs> I think you should uh, aware about absent. the file. Yes, eh? I was absent, sir. In first few weeks, sir. <clears throat> Just let me see. go to the class materials. Can you access that class material? Yes, sir. OK. And open the third file that is IRS underscore two. Okay. Got it. Fine. OK, yes. That that PPT I'm discussing over here. OK, OK. okay. And currently I'm a slide number four. Yes, sir. And you. You're welcome. So just see over here, uh, there are different uh, steps through which we do the acquisition in satellite based imaging. So step A, sources of energy. Step B, propagation through the atmosphere. And step C is earth surface features where we do the analysis of energy interaction with the major earth surface objects. Like uh, how energy interact with soil, how energy interact with uh, vegetation, like uh, uh, even if we see this vegetation water okay sand so uh, these are the major uh, main features which cover mostly on the earth surface so then again the step d the retransmission of retransmission of the reflected or radiated energy through the same atmosphere so the core uh, analysis behind this, like why we do, why we, uh, why we are uh, analyzing in detail the step A, B, C, and D. It is required to understand step E over here. Okay, at step E we talk about sensing systems. Okay, when we have a detailed understanding of these four steps. Then only we are in position to design the sensors. Okay, we are in position to select the spectral band. Okay, and we are in position to design the sensors. Correct? Like which spectral band we choose to select the sensor. Correct? Now, uh, what is the criteria to choose this spectral band? Obviously, criteria should be like that sensor should receive enough energy in that spectral band. I hope it is clear. So the energy which is radiated from sun, okay, that energy passes through the atmosphere, okay, then, then interact with the earth surface object, then radiated or reflected back to the sensor. So at step E, we have a sensing system. They are, they are the satellite based sensing system. Okay. So those sensing system receive the energy in a complete electromagnetic, uh, this EMR spectrum. But what is the magnitude? Okay. So based on availability of magnitude peaks in the energy reaches to the sensing system, we select the spectral band. Okay, so part A we have already discussed. 
like the energy which is radiated from sun okay how that energy vary with respect to wavelength okay and at step c when energy interact to the earth surface object how again it is radiated back this part we have discussed so radiated energy from sun it is covered and radiated energy from earth it is covered okay and we know the variation how the spectral uh, radiant excitance vary with respect to wavelength so there we can decide okay this is the uh, wavelength uh, uh, this is the wavelength range where we are getting the significant return significant radiated energy okay this is the place where we can select the where we can design the sensor now uh, if i say designing the sensor what do we mean by that designing the sensors means we we uh, we select the filter because see when i talk about one spectral band again i am at slide number 14 i have uh, revisited to that slide so uh, let's say if i am uh, uh, we, we uh, i have selected the red band okay that varies from 0.6 to 0.7 uh, a micrometer okay so what do we mean by designing the sensor designing the sensors means deciding a filter over there it's a band pass filter that filter only allow energy from 0.7 to 0.5 micrometer to pass through and that sensing system filter discard other energy see at the sensor energy is uh, energy is out, from the earth surface object there is outgoing energy and that outgoing energy is available in a entire spectrum from visible to microwave okay but we have designed a sensor that can only allow energy to pass through that 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 can only allow the energy to be sensed in the designed spectral band it means if it is designed in grid so only 0.6 to 0.7 micrometer energy is sensed okay i hope now uh, you should not have any confusion in that okay now again i am at slide number 12 from where we started okay so we have already defined what is objective behind to understand these fundamentals okay now if we see this radiated energy curve with respect to wavelength so on this basis we can say that okay if we have a, a in the visible range there is a possibility to design the sensor okay and we can say that why it is so because we have a highest radiated energy from sun okay i am only talking about the possibility right now okay yes there we can fix but this energy is only at the surface outer surface of the sun from where it is radiated back still we need to assess the behavior of atmosphere okay whether this uh, on the basis of the radiated energy curve if we are saying okay we can we can uh, design our sensor in visible spectrum so we need to ensure that is that band okay pass through the atmosphere without uh, the significant loss how atmosphere behave that we need to assess further when that energy reaches in that in that spectral band that energy reaches to the earth surface object do we get enough reflected energy from the object okay and further the same atmosphere it will pass through 
so again the when incoming in, uh, the weight must be be had to the incoming route similarly it will be have for the outgoing energy towards sensor so that will be same okay so now our next part of discussion is to understand the behavior of atmosphere okay so the role of atmosphere first we define the path length okay so the path length if you say to irrespective of its source where uh, i mean it is sun over here all radiation detected by remote sensors passes through some distance okay like when we consider in this case to what is the distance i mean you need, we need to consider the path length path length means distance that is traveled by your energy signal from source to target and then back to the sensor okay so the path length involved uh, in this analysis that can vary widely okay let's say if i uh, if i share an example over here so in case of space photography results from sunlight that passes through the full thickness of earth's atmosphere it is twice on its journey from source to sensor okay so we can say that on the other hand an airborne thermal sensor detect energy emitted directly from the object on the earth what does this mean okay the meaning of this uh, these uh, analysis is when we consider uh, in a in a visible spectrum when our sensor is based on the reflected energy fine so what is the path length in that case let's say if uh, sensing system depends on the sun so the distance traveled that is a path length within the atmosphere from uh, source to target like again if, uh, if i go back i'm at slide number 12 okay if let's say if we uh, select our sensor in red band as i discussed before okay so red band we don't have any radiated component correct we have only reflected component as uh, sudhir uh, discussed so this sudhir uh, told that and even we we have already discussed before like we have a 3 meter dividing line okay sorry 3 micrometer so wavelength more than 3 micrometer we have only radiated component radiated plus reflected component while uh, less than 3 micrometer we have only reflected component from the surface object okay so if we select our sensor at uh, zero uh, at in the red band okay so in the red band we have where the sensor sense only the reflected component when we talk about the reflected component it means the path length we consider from source to target then back to to the sensor okay for again for the detail i mean for better clarity i am moving back to the the slide number 4 right now on okay so sir yeah please sir, the the path length is uh, the distance from the surface of the sun to the exact place where the sensor is yes this is source to target then back to the sensor two two into single distance sir huh? yes correct twice it's not if we can't say two into see it's uh, if we say the path length means the uh, length of earth atmosphere it's a length of earth, earth atmosphere when the energy coming from sun it enters into the earth atmosphere then we consider the path length from that place okay 
that is full thickness of earth atmosphere na like what is the thickness because beyond that we have a vacuum so ultimately signal strength will be altered or it will decrease due to the particles in the earth atmosphere so correct we can say that two times the total uh, uh, this thickness of earth atmosphere okay but uh, it is only uh, apply when we are sensing the reflected energy less than 3 micrometer even we say when we sense the reflected energy more than 3 micrometer we'll see that but for this case i have considered the red band the red band is less than 3 micrometer there we have only reflected component when i talk sensor sense the reflected component then in that case the path length is considered as two times the full thickness of earth atmosphere correct what does this mean like from the source energy radiated energy emanates when it enters the earth atmosphere the path length we start counting okay then it reaches to the earth surface object so it is a distance from then it is reaches to our surface object then finally re reflected back to the again reflected back in the space so it again crosses through the earth atmosphere and reaches to the satellite okay but when we consider our sensor in a thermal band thermal band means 9.7 micrometer let's say right now i am at slide number 12 so if you see that after 3 micrometer dividing line you can see the radiated energy from earth surface there is a curve where we get maximum at 9.7 micrometer okay which uh, which uh, this radiation law we used to calculate the maximum wavelength sorry wavelength at which a wavelength at which we get the maximum energy wins displacement wins displacement law it's the wins displacement law that tells us the wavelength at which we get maximum energy radiated energy it is equal to a by t it means the wavelength is inversely proportional to the temperature and it is evident in this graph if you see if you increase the temperature then wavelength at which we get the maxima decreases okay again uh, due course of discussion even uh, in the next lectures i will also try to revise i, I try to cover the previous concepts so that you can synchronize uh, everything like uh, i should not uh, uh, i want like if i am discussing one particular concept so the background which is required that that should also briefly discuss irrespective of the discussion whether we have done it or not okay so uh, this radiated curve when you see so at 9.7 micrometer we get a maxima is it at uh, t is equal to 300 degree kelvin that is for the earth when we design our sensor at 9.7 micrometer and if it is a thermal sensor okay then then in this case what will be the path length thermal sensor means that sensor only sense the radiated component designed to sense the radiated component then what will be the path length in this case it will not be double because see we are not uh, now our sensor is, uh, doesn't rely on the sun as a energy source because in this case earth itself acting as an energy source earth temperature is more than 0 degree kelvin it's 300 degree kelvin and it radiates the energy so in this case earth acting as an energy source and the radiated energy component is sensed by the sensor so in this case path length is only the yeah, it will be only the full thickness of earth atmosphere it is not double the full thickness of earth atmosphere like in the previous case where 
sensor sense the reflected energy okay now what are the other uh, effect of atmosphere on which the strength of energy depends okay so it is a path length obviously the strength of signal uh, strength of electromagnetic radiation that is uh, radiated from the sun so you are already aware about the graph that is how the radiant excitance curve vary with respect to wavelength so then type of atmosphere now you need to analyze like at a different uh, level uh, at a height level from the ground uh, or our surface how atmosphere behaves to the incoming electromagnetic radiation okay that analysis we will do then what is the wavelength of signal okay so earth atmosphere overall depends on these four parameters okay so effect of atmosphere on the intensity and spectral component composition of radiation available for the remote sensing okay so we do the analysis of our atmosphere on these four parameters okay the first phenomenon that occurred in the atmosphere is scattering okay earth atmosphere scatters the spectral energy okay and uh, it is atmosphere scattering is a unpredictable diffusion of radiation by particles in the atmosphere okay so uh, we have uh, two types of scattering relay scattering my scattering okay so and further we have a uh, non selective scattering if these are the selective scattering where uh, dependency is on the wavelength so in case of selective scattering the scatter's magnitude depends on the wavelength okay while in case of non selective scattering the scatter's scatter's means uh, when the energy interact with the uh, earth atmosphere how it diffuse okay so when they diffuse and uh, in a different direction as you see in the figure it it, it scatters so once what is the magnitude of scatters in case of un, uh, non selective scattering the scatters magnitude doesn't depend on the wavelength correct right? so first we discuss the relay scattering okay so these relay scatters are common when the radiation interact with the atmosphere uh, when uh, this uh, interact with the atmospheric uh, molecules and other tiny particles that are much smaller in diameter com uh, compared to the wavelength okay so we see uh in the atmospheric uh, this in the atmosphere okay if we go up from the earth surface okay so we see the band in the earth atmosphere where the particle size is very less less than the wavelength okay so this is the criteria wherever in the earth atmosphere this criteria satisfy okay there relay scattering takes place okay and what will be the magnitude of scatter the scatter magnitude varies with respect to the it is uh, inversely uh, dependent on the fourth power of the wavelength let's see over here if wavelength is large then scattering will be less so what it suggest it means we can see the significant scattering at lower wavelength but at the same time this criteria should uh, should be satisfied at that level of the atmosphere that is if we keep on decreasing the wavelength what does this mean 
at the same time you also need to decrease the particle size to satisfy the criteria d less less than lambda and the second uh, this second criteria where we say that okay magnitude of scatters is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the wavelength so it clearly suggests that the relic scattering decreases exponentially decreases okay when we increase the wavelength okay so there we do the analysis because in our case if we consider the lowest band lowest band in terms of wavelength okay so that we select visible spectrum is it so we analyze what is the effect of relic scattering in visible spectrum and also we see whether in visible spectrum the criteria first is satisfied or not so when we select lambda between 0.4 to 0.7 micrometer okay there we see that okay in a different layers of earth atmosphere is it satisfied in some layer these less 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 than lambda yes it is satisfied it is satisfied in the outer layer of atmosphere okay and this is the reason why the relic is scattering is very severe in the sort of wavelength and this is the reason why we see sky blue in color and it also it is also responsible for the haziness in the images okay so i'm stopping for 4 to 5 minutes over here and i request you to kindly revisit the discussion recently we had and i expect i am expecting you are making note on that as i suggested um, multiple occasions okay the the discussion which we are doing kindly make note on that so this time i am giving to complete your note five minutes it's five minute gap then again i will resume the discussion uh, let's say it's 1142 so it's 1147 
okay uh, there is one more suggestion why i want what i want you to uh, do uh, like uh, uh, this remote sensing and image interpretation book by lily sand and co-authors okay uh, you can open chapter 1 that is uh, section 1.3 where there is a discussion on energy interaction in the atmosphere okay so i would like you to kindly go through the scattering part right now okay it's a one page discussion okay and uh, i have already done discussion on relay scattering so i am giving you 20 minutes time okay just go through the discussion on scattering okay then then again when uh, you have read uh, the details of scattering okay through the book i will summarize okay then we'll do a uh, uh, one by one discussion like uh, obviously i'm going to ask you what you have read so i will again explain the entire scattering part then i will do the discussion with you how much content you have understood so you are going to read that uh, one page uh, discussion in the book uh, section 1.3 then after that i will summarize the entire content then we'll have discussion fine so it's 20 minutes time for you then uh, i expect you to go through that okay and after that i will summarize there are so that's one important. page number 9 uh, i have a book with me so right now i need to see the pdf but that is section uh, let me okay just i am opening in book, in book only that is on page number 9 which is designated as page number 9 on book uh, wait 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 i am just yeah correct it is on page number 9 in the pdf version of the book that is shared with you it is on page number 9 and 10 yes so go, go through the scattering part and i have already discussed we have a selective and non selective scattering in the selective we have a two types relay and my scattering and where uh, there is a dependency on the wavelength while in case of non selective the scatters do not depend on the wavelength okay and the manifestation of relay scattering is blue color of the sky okay so that description also will uh, that is given and though we'll do discussion on that because i want you to involve so i don't know because because one side i am teaching but uh, to in this virtual platform like i also need to know like how much you are reading or how much you are understand okay 